<clears throat> Welcome back to my garage. Tonight I'm going to tell you about the two different operation principles in two-stroke engines. Traditional uh, weed whacker or chainsaw or uh, bolt motor or whatever trimmer two-stroke and you have the modern performance two-stroke engine and they operate with two completely different principles. I must add in that this is just scratching the surface this stuff gets complicated fast so it's um, it's just scratching the surface so here's a traditional two-stroke engine Now a traditional two-stroke engine, or old-school two-stroke engine, or whatever, uh, works just like a pump. So the moving piston is um, doing the work of transferring mixture and sucking in fresh mixture uh, into the engine. So how it works is if you picture the piston is at the top dead center, the spark plug has fired and the expanding combustion gases is moving the pistons down in the bore. This is compressing the crankcase and since the reed valve or rotary valve or piston port is closed or when it is closed, fresh mixture in the case is compressed and when the piston uncovers the transfer port, it is being transferred by the high pressure differential from the case and the, between the case and the cylinder it's been transferred from the crankcase and into the cylinder above the piston then the piston works its way up and this creates a lower pressure in the crankcase which sucks in fresh mix through the carb and as it reaches top dead center and the combustion gases starts to expand, it is pushed back down and the cycle repeats itself. So this is how it works in a traditional or old school or trimmer or chainsaw two-stroke engine. So the piston is controlling all the action. Now a modern performance two-stroke is different. Much different. And I'll try to um, illustrate it by drawing uh, the engine in a, di uh, in a different way. Now, the modern performance two-stroke engine does not work or operate as a pump. And uh, as you can see, this is not actually how you usually draw a two-stroke engine. But I do it this way because I want to uh, illustrate a point. And the point is that it does not operate as a pump, but it operates with resonance through the system. Kind of like a pulse jet. A, a pulse jet would look... A valved pulse jet would look something like this. So you have a large volume connected to a small volume, which is the intake. We are reads. This is a valved pulse jet. Could be a, a non-valved pulse jet. Uh, operates kind of the same. Only you would have the intake uh, in a different orientation. And then you have the exhaust here. So these two systems are kind of the same systems or they act kind of the same. So the piston does not contribute much to induction nor transfer when the engine is in the power band. Most of the job of transferring mixture through the engine is not done by the piston. It's the pipe that's doing all the work. But the whole system, just like in a pulse jet, has to work together in synergy or harmony or it has to resonate in the same tune. Think of an orchestra. All the instruments, all the parts of the orchestra, all the parts of this two-stroke engine has to work together. The right dimensions, the right length, the right volumes to work in synergy and to produce a maximum power. And this is where it gets complicated. Because a pulse jet is relatively simple. And that's because all the volumes are the same, they're not variable. 
and all the parts of the pulse jet is connected all the time except for a valved pulse jet which has a simple read valve so a one-way check valve in one point so that's the only thing the only thing that um, that is a variable in a pulse jet it's that this valve makes this volume and this volume not connected some of the time but since it's a read valve it's controlled by the resonance and the pressure differentials in the chamber. Now a two-stroke is a totally different beast. It will be hard to explain this without quoting Fritz over Mars uh, directly because uh, he has explained it so well at, uh, over at the ESE uh, work, works engine tuner forum. Uh, but I'll try to give it my own twist. So let's start at the intake here. So we have a small volume which is connected to a large volume the atmosphere, which is sometimes connected to a smaller than the atmosphere but larger than the intake volume, the crankcase. But that crankcase is constantly varying in volume. And then again, that large varying volume is sometimes connected to a smaller but very variable volume. And that small and very varying or changing, ever changing volume is sometimes connected to a different uh, or a larger volume, which is connected to the huge atmosphere volume. Already now you can see that it is uh, quite a different beast to tame than the, the very simple pulse jet, because the whole system is always changing. This volume is changing and it's not always connected to this volume and this volume is changing and not always connected to this volume and this volume is thank god constant but it's not always connected to this ever changing volume which is not connected to this just sometimes connected to this ever changing volume which is just sometimes connected to this constant volume there's also a heap of different temperatures throughout the system and they are also ever changing and then comes all the other variables like uh, wind blowing across the pipe and coolant temperature and uh, all that stuff. So there's lots of variables calculating and estimating what will work best in a modern powerful performance two stroke engine is hard, very hard. Thankfully we have Engmod 2T which does a great job of it. Link in the description about crankcase volumes. In a traditional two-stroke, increasing crankcase compression and lowering crankcase volume will lead to power gains because uh, the mixture is delivered at a higher pressures through the transfers, so more mixture is delivered faster up into the cylinder, up to a point. When the initial pressure gets too high, the transfer ports lose control and you get a lot of short cir circuiting, which is uh, the fresh mixture just hitting for the exhaust. And also a lot of mixing of the fresh with the spent gases. The higher crankcase compression also means you've decreased the crankcase volume. And now we have a short initial burst of uncontrollable fresh charge, followed by no transfer at all. Or even reverse flow, because you bled off all the high pressure uh, at the, or the you bled off all the mixture at high pressure at uh, transfer opening. So now your small low pressure case has no more to offer. In a modern performance two stroke on the other hand you have a relatively large crankcase volume and relatively low primary compression and now the properly designed pipe is sucking hard but not too hard and long through the transfers on the case around bottom dead center, if it's properly designed. This big case has a lot of volume and the mix is delivered at a lower initial uh, pressure than, with the, uh, than in the traditional way, but due to the larger volume being depressurized, this leads to a higher pressure differential between the crankcase and the cylinder throughout the whole phase, so a higher mean pressure differential throughout the phase compared to the traditional two-stroke which blows all the juice 
at transfer open and then it's basically empty not empty but it's uh, there's very low pressure and not much transfer at all okay two strokes are simple or are they <laughs> thanks for watching I know this was just scratching the surface and maybe it was more of a confuser than anything but um, but I promise you this is how a modern two-stroke works not a pump it's resonance resonance harmony synergy tune that's what matters resonance throughout the system okay please subscribe thanks for watching I'll see you next time